MGTV, η ομογένεια κοντά σα. I'm the president of Doris of Penelope Manhattan chapter. Uh, we're very excited because we're here uh, in this wonderful event to support San Michael's home. Uh, this is Lou Katzos. I'm the uh, president of uh, EMCA, the East Mediterranean Business Cultural Alliance, and also the president of Delphi uh, chapter 25 of AHEPA. Tonight uh, we are having a special event called the Impact of Ancient Hellenic Culture in Modern uh, Jewelry. And what we're going to do is have a presentation by Hari uh, Apergi, who is uh, going to discuss uh, the topic of, of the evening. And we're also going to have an auction uh, after the presentation. A jewelry auction. Uh, Hari Apergi uh, is contributing with her jewelry for this great cause. And the uh, money for the auction will go towards St. Michael's in, in Long Island. Uh, we're proud uh, as uh, EMCA to host this event uh, and was, I'm certainly proud for uh, HEPA, uh, not only uh, Delphi 25 but also District 6. I'm the Lieutenant Governor of District 6 and I'm uh, very happy that many members of HEPA throughout, throughout the state have come tonight for this auction to benefit St. Michael's. Uh, enjoy the evening and I'm sure it'll be very pleasant. Thank you. And really the, the important part is the, uh, certainly the auction. Uh, which is uh, for a charitable purpose uh, uh, regarding St. Michael's. So, my name is Lou Katzos. Thank you for coming this evening. I'm the uh, president of EMCA, the East Mediterranean Business Culture Alliance. And uh, EMCA is really proud to have these type of, type of events, especially when it involves uh, other organizations, in particular in this case, uh, the HEPA, and I am the uh, president of the Delphi chapter uh, 25, and also the Lieutenant Governor of uh, District 6, which is New York State, AHEPA. We are the largest uh, AHEPA chapter in the, uh, I, I keep saying that, but it's true, in the, uh, in the world uh, by far, and uh, we're proud of that. And we're also proud of a lot of the things that we do philanthropically. Uh, tonight we have uh, special presentations from some very extremely talented uh, individuals. And, uh, and that's again what, what we also like to do. We also like to, uh, and I'm talking about in this case, uh, we're very into education. And certainly this particular topic that we're going to be discussing tonight, which is the impact of, um, of ancient Hellenic culture and modern Hellenic jewelry, is very, is very apropos, quite frankly, because as we all know, as we all know, On Friday is the anniversary, the true anniversary of the Greek Revolution. Now you're going to be looking at me and say, isn't that March? Uh, isn't that March 25th? The answer is yes. But don't forget, March 25th in a Julian calendar in Greece was April 5th in the West. So, did you get it? Yeah. Julian calendar, we're in the Gregorian calendar. And the reason why, why it's extremely important, why the revolution is important, because prior to the revolution, certainly throughout the West, there was a tremendous, there was a tremendous interest in Hellenic culture. In particular, in particular, I hate to say this, because we have one of the proponents to bring back some of the ancient sculptures, in this particular case, is the Aphrodite that, uh, in, the, in the Louvre. And, uh, In the, in the uh, travels of the, of the Westerners in particular, you know, the wealthy, who would go to, to the East in particular, to the Levant, to Greece, to the Mediterranean, they would, they would pick up souvenirs. In many cases, they picked up parts of the Parthenon. In many cases, they 
picked up uh, parts of the Temple of Masi, which is also which is also in the British Museum that no one seems to talk about. Like nobody wants the balance of the of the Temple of Masi, even though even though outside of, of uh, the Temple of Theseus, it's basically it's basically the second best preserved temple in all of Greece. Is that correct? Yeah. So. The other thing that, that's important about the revolution itself is that understand that here in America, we were very interested, there were a lot of Philippines who were interested in the revolution. And this country was founded basically on some of the classical ideals, uh, ideals of Hellenism. That included architecture, obviously, included uh, concepts of democracy, philosophy, mathematics, all the rest of that. And in fact, all the, all the uh, founders of the United States, the educated ones, most of them were, all spoke the Hellenic language. And in fact, we voted, they voted in the Congress to see if they would make the Hellenic language the language of the United States. It lost, but we were almost, we were almost actually Hellenes ourselves. We have a very talented um, architect and designer, and when you, when you look at her biography, you say to yourself, this person, from the time she was a child, was very interested in the arts. And it becomes very obvious. She studied architecture. She then went into sculpting. She then went into more finite aspects, smaller aspects of jewelry. With all her emphasis, in many cases, relating to, uh, to the classical world. As a matter of fact, the buildings, I think, that you renovated in, in terms of Athens, they were neoclassical structures. And as a matter of fact, she exudes Hellenism, because look at how she's dressed, actually. Okay? She's, a, she's actually dressed, more than dressed the part. So we're very fortunate to have her here. Her name, of course, uh, Haris, Haripia, uh, one of the graces. And obviously, we're, we're graced by having her here tonight. We are here for our charitable purposes. And uh, it's, it's very fascinating to, to combine business and charity at the same time. Obviously, she's, making, she's becoming a big hit, or she is a big hit, in the Hellenic Republic. And she's going to introduce her jewelry into the United States. And she was kind enough to not only introduce her jewelry into the US, but make this the first appearance of her jewelry in a charitable way. And, that's, and that should be complimented. So please, a round of applause. Thank you. At the same time, we have a very talented poet with us, journalist, uh, UNESCO, you see the UNESCO sign in the front. Uh, uh, Claudia, uh, she, she comes from Italy, but she's really a Hellene. Because why? Because obviously the Italians, are Hellenes, okay? Una faccia una razza, as we would say, okay? So, so anyway, because we want to be brief, I'm going to introduce um, the president of the Daughters of Penelope to say a few words, uh, Effie Stratton. Effie? Hello, everyone. Thank you all for coming to a wonderful event. It's just an honor and pleasure for me to be here with all of you tonight. And I'm very happy because this is our first uh, big jolly event with uh, HEPA Brothers. Our chapter is one of the oldest chapter of the HEPA family, founded in 1935, and it was closed for many years. We reactivated a year ago. We started very small and we have youth. Me and my sisters, we do a great job. And uh, we grow very fast. Uh, as a president of this historic chapter, uh, I'm very proud of what we have done so far. And um, of course, uh, for all the activities we did, including this event today. Uh, I'm planning to make this chapter bigger and stronger with many activities, networking activities, and of course, charity activities. So if anyone wants to get involved or uh, wants to learn more, they can talk to me later. So as you all know, uh, we're doing this event to support St. Michael's Home, a facility which provides spiritual, emotional, and physical comfort and care to elderly Greek Americans. And uh, in a loving Greek Orthodox environment, 
where residents are treated as family members. So the net proceeds from the auction of these uh, gorgeous jewelries uh, will benefit the campaign of the home expansion project. So remember, the biggest the bid is, the more money will go to uh, St. Michael's home. Um, I would like to thank uh, Harry Sapegi, this uh, very educated and very talented woman in many ways, for her uh, contribution to this uh, cause. Aperi's jewelry uh, are pieces of art. Behind every jewelry, there is a story, and this is the magnificent to me. Uh, they have been uniquely designed and created after years of study of architecture, uh, sculpture, and close study of nature with laws of geometry. All of that is uh, all about uh, classicism, actually. Uh, we, we talk about the daughters of Penelope. Obviously, Penelope was, uh, was the wife of Odysseus. And Evreclia, obviously, was uh, the woman who raised the Odysseus and Telemachus. Is that correct? Okay. So with that, I introduce really the, the, the poet uh, Clelia. Please, grace us, grace us with your poetry. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, I am particularly happy for having the honor of being among distinguished citizens of art and civilization. For such an important uh, charitable purpose, such as this, to benefit the fundraising campaign for the home expansion project of the new site of St. Michael's Home, and to facilitate the rehabilitation of the 11 egg property located in Uniondale, Hampstead, New York, which includes independent and assisted living apartments as well as nursing care facilities. Through my position as a UNESCO direct, Director of Literature and Art, but also as the ambassador of the great campaign of the islands of Milo, like you said before, concerning the repatriation of the statue of Venus Milos from Louvre, <coughs> allow me to warmly congratulate Mr. Lukacos, President of EPCA and AHEPA, Mr. Argiris Argitaco, ex I have a chapter, 25 president, Mrs. Eti Strada, president of Daughters of Penelope, the sponsors that are mentioned in the Aperian catalog of fine jewelry, of, and of course, the talented creator, artist Harry Sapergi, honor guest of this event. An applause, please. <laughs> As each one of you, and all together, have defined in advance tonight's great success. How? So happens that all tickets are since yesterday sold out. I would also like to thank the media for promoting this event, especially Mrs. Evangeline Placas, founder and CEO of Hellenic Daily News, who fervently supports the Hellenic diaspora. As the evening contains various surprises, already announced and others not, I would like to ask you to remain until the end of the auction, where one of you is going to win one of the wonderful Alberghi jewelry items. As while entering this room, along with the auction catalog you have, also received a lottery ticket. May the lucky one lottery ticket. Everybody has it? Okay. Above all, the most important reason for which we all ought to stay until the end is the ethos of the generosity that befits every citizen who actually disposes of this ethos of generosity and love for humanity. Because, Mr. Gatos, you are going to agree with me, I suppose. Not all charity is philanthropy, and not all philanthropy is charity. One image equals to 1,000 ancient Greek words. This would be the title that I personally would give to tonight's presentation of Harry Sapelli, the artist who, by means of her speech, is going to initiate us to the impact of fancy Hellenic culture in modern jewelry design. Not by chance, I may add. <laughs> 
Her studies in classical music, dance, and the arts in general, combined with her knowledge in science, and her studies in architecture and her background in engineering, gave her the possibility to be able to combine them in a very, very special way, by means of transforming the ancient Hellenic idea in the modern and timeless art of the art of jewelry. In other words, to art in its wholeness. In the same way, this evening, the art of my poetry is hosted by the art of Harry Sapergi in a unique conversation with yesterday, tomorrow, and today. Well, how, like this, my eyes seek a change of God from the eyes of Christ. <laughs> Οι φρουράς ζητούν τα μάτια μου από τα μάτια της Σοφίας. Έξι κόρες, αναπάβονται ζωντανές στην άκρη της πόλης κάτω από θεών συνεχεία. Ένα κλαδιεριάς σκεπάζει τη μακροβιότητά τους. Ένα δόλι, λυπά της μνήμης στο βράχο για να ποτίσει η γνώση. Περιγούμε ανάμεσά τους πλανόδια φιγούρα στις λιλιπούτιες συνοικίες του σήμερα, βεβάζοντας το αρχαίο θέατρο των σκιών του. Σκιέ που δεν χάθηκαν. Σκιέ που φωταγωγούν τι πυλωνικίε των καιρών, διαγράφοντα κύκλου ιστορία. Αλλαγή φρουρά ζητούν. Αν μπορούσαμε να επιλέξουμε έναν, απλώ ένα λόγο που μπορούσε να αντιμετωπίσει και να στέλνει για όλου του ανθρώπου του έργου μα, ποιο θα ήταν αυτό. One could argue beauty, another wisdom, another perfection. I would suggest harmony, which contains all three mentioned above. Luckily enough, our ancestors had discovered a way to measure harmony. Thousands of years ago, using mathematical terms, thus we have discovered that they were practicing harmony when creating their timeless, magnificent works of art from their temples, such as the Parthenon, to their ceramic vessels. Nothing that ancient potter, noting that ancient potters were judged by their ability to achieve the desired proportions of each type of pottery while working on a rotating amount of clay. We find the golden proportion applied on statues while perfecting the image of the ideal human body. Even on the folds of the statue's garments, which often follow this rule. To sum it up in a few words, they found out that when you have two unequal entities, be that segments or parallelograms, harmony is achieved when the proportion of the smaller part to the larger one equals the proportion of the large one to both of them added together then balance between those two unequal entities is achieved, and the result is harmonious and pleasing to the eye. Something like an ancient Hellenic Zen, for instance. This is commonly known as the golden section, proportion or rule, and has been a major source of inspiration for me, helping me create objects that would be beautiful without anyone knowing exactly why. The first object I designed was the company's own logo. I have used two circles and a golden line that cuts the first circle in the middle, creating the Hellenic letter phi, which stands for Phidias, paying tribute to the first and greatest sculptor of all times, who made use of this golden rule in his sculptural work, and the second circle into two unequal parts, which are following the same rule. It so happens, though, that this is not a sterile shape, but has been designed so as to be functional as well. Therefore, it can easily transform into a necklace or a bracelet clasp, as you can see in the photograph above. Using this magical golden proportion, I have been able to design many pieces of jewelry. One of them is the earring set called Xerophila Argyropsis where the raindrop has been placed exactly on the correct spot to fulfill that rule. The Nephilus pendant, where I have made full use of it. Το χειρότερο για μένα, ξέρεις ποιο είναι, ότι νιώθω πέρα από τις λέξεις. 
Ίσως γι' αυτό και γράφω, μήπως και επεκτείνω τη γραμμή που ενώνει την πιθανότητα με το συμπέρασμα. Πιθανολογεί ο καιρό όταν βρέχει, μήπως επεκτείνει η βροχή την καταγίδα. Πιθανολογεί και η βροχή για την κακή διάθεση του καιρού όταν την επιλέγει. Όπως η χημική ένωση φέρνει σύνθεση και άλλοτε από σύνθεση. Έτσι και το υδρόγωνο της τέρησης συνδύθεται με το οξύγωνο ιεροπόλο σαν ένωση σε υδρόμορφο συνέστημα. Κι άλλοτε το ίμιση να επιλέγει σαν και πρώτα, γιατί το πολύ του φαίνεται πιο όξινο από τη λύθη, αλλά και πιο βασικό από το ουδέτερο μπορώ. And then the other ones were copied. He did the master sculpture and the other ones were copied. So what's interesting about what's happening here tonight is we have an architect who's what we used to call, and there's very few of them, they actually don't exist, a master builder. The master builder is a person who not only designs the aspects of architecture, but also constructs it. So what, what is happening here is how he basically brings into, 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 into her world the knowledge, the engineering knowledge that she's talking about, the symmetry that she's talking about in terms of sculpture and all the rest of that, but at the same time, she actually has worked with her hands. In other words, the mind and the hands is what she uses, which is the finest aspect, by the way, of architecture. Are you an architect? No, but for 30 years I taught at the School of Architecture. <laughs> <laughs> is after all a basic characteristic of nature. Nature can be found everywhere in our ancestors' creations. If, for instance, we take a close look at the three ancient Hellenic orders, they all contain a small part of nature. The Doric capital, the first one, has a sea urchin incorporated upside down. So they all contain a small part of nature. The Doric capital has a sea urchin incorporated upside down. The Ionian has the shape of the Nautilus. The Corinthian consists of a basket full of a well-known ancient Hellenic plant, the acanthus. Inspired by nature, I have created numerous pieces of art, such as the following. Inspired by spring green leaves, the diaphanophilon ring was designed. Inspired by the semi-transparent autumn leaves, the chlorophyllon. The chlorophyllum ring was designed. Inspired by the seashell, we find on the sand of practically all Hellenic beaches, the conch synergy ring was designed. This consists of three parts. You can have the middle part, just a little thin ring with diamonds, and if for, uh, for every day, and you can make another combination using the two shells and you can have three three pieces of jewelry in one inspired by the curvy sensational morphology of liquid mercury the hydrargyrum bracelet was designed inspired by the dripping of the rain on the leaves of trees and plants the stalactite set of earrings was designed Inspired by the pattern of sunlight projecting itself through the ripples of a summer breeze on the seabed, the oceanic bracelet was designed. Inspired by the pattern of the helianthus, the helianthus flower, the eccentric ring was designed. Inspired by the peacock's fabulous mathematical feathers, the trihotomy ring was designed. Now we may speak about architecture, ergonomy and, ergonomy and mechanics. Λίγο πιο ελαφριά από τα λάθη, λίγο πιο βαριά από την επιθυμία. Θα την φορέσω καθώς πορεύουμε στη λιθόστρωτη χασμοδία της ζωής. Και σας ρωτώ, τώρα που κρυώνουμε και δυο μας, πέστε μου, ποιος θα σηκωθεί να ανάψει τα ξύλα από τα λόγια εκείνα που πρέπει να γίνουν. Στα. One of the basic tools in an architect's work, regardless of the shape of the building they have chosen, be that fluid volumes or square constructions, is the grid. The grid allows us to control our design and shape it according 
to specific measurement units that make our architectural work a lot easier. This is one of the floor plans of the famous Villa Savoir made by Le Corbusier in the 1930s. This practice dates back to the ancient times when the grid was consisting of column placement spots and the walls of the temples would be the result of joining those spots to form a line. In this way, we had a wide range of different temple types, such as the prostylus, the dipterous, or the peripterous type of temple. Inspired by this familiar practice, the architectural bracelet was designed. Furthermore, in an attempt to pay tribute to the ancient Hellenic architectural orders, the Ionian flower was designed, depicting an Ionian capital transformed into a lovely flower. Also, inspired by the column base of the Artemis temple, uh, Latin name Diana, in Sardis, Minor Asia, the Plochmus ring was designed. Last but not least, inspired by the magnificent Anthemions of the Hellenic temples, the Anthemion set of Eries was designed. Ergonomy is a key point in my work. Most of the bracelets in the market are of a cylindrical shape, which when worn, become dysfunctional because they never fit properly on the arm. In all our bracelets, the shape we use is the conic one, meaning that the item is wider on top and less wide towards the hand. This is the reason why all of our wide bracelet designs fit into a trapeze shape. So when curved, they leave a gap of two parallel endings, which are very agreeable when worn. Furthermore, I'm proud to present you a great and unique solution to the aggravating problem of heavily set rings, which turn because of their weight. While designing ring pavés, we keep the gem layers close to the finger. While achieving volume on another level, thus the rings become voluminous yet full of graceful transparency, while at the same time they provide comfort. Αυτό είναι το τετράγωνο του λόγου. Πόσο ακόμα να τετραγωνίσω αυτό το συνέστημα, πόσο άλλο να ξύσω τις πληγές του για να βρω γονείς να πιαστώ. Για κριτική δεν μιλάει η αγάπη, παρά μόνο για συγχώρηση στις οξύες γωνίες our ancient ancestors not only knew geometry, but were able to accurately calculate the height of the Egyptian pyramids, at least from Miletus to this, distances between cities, they were able to calculate Earth's perimeter, were able to dig tunnels on both sides of a mountain and make both tunnels meet in the core of the mountain. This is the Epalinos ancient tunnel in Samos. They also mastered what we call optical corrections. If, for instance, you have a square and draw lines in the middle, you still have a square, but what you see is a rectangle. If you want to see a square and still keep your middle lines, you will have to shorten your initial square, forming a rectangle. The red part is what we cut from it. It becomes a rectangle. There is only one rectangle that will give you the impression of a square shape while still keeping your two lines. The ancient Hellenic temples are packed with optical corrections. Here is an example of optical corrections, corrections while designing a set of cufflinks. This is like a square, but it has been designed a parallelogram. Stylizing. Stylizing consists of depicting basic geometrical traits in a non-realistic style, something like a geometrical summary, let's say. One of the most famous examples is the Nautilus shape on the Ionian capitals. When it came to design sea urchin in jewelry, the basic five star was kept accentuated with larger zones of gems, while the rest of the space was filled up with rows of small diamonds. So as we see there, we have a star, where you see the nature has made this star a little bit more dark green than the rest. It, it is shouting that it's a five-star pattern. 
And now we come to astronomy. This is a poem about Greece. Emigrant hope. Είμαι αν, δεν είμαι πια εγώ. Πανσέλινος με γύρευσε για να με φέρνει ολόκληρη σε σένα. Και εσύ που κοινωνείς τα παιδιά σου στα 18 είναι φέγγαρα του στάζεις. Το μισό της λογικής μας άφησες μονάχα. Να πρέπει να φυλάμε στα μάτια το αύριο αποχαιρετώντας. Τι περίεργο παιχνίδι παίζει αλήθεια. Η πατρίδα στην πετανάστρια κύβα. Το άλλο μισό. Σκοτίνιασε στην προσπάθειά μου να εκλείψει από το σουφός των κυβερνήσεων. Και εσύ, Ελλάδα, γιατί δεν άφησες τον ίδιο να δεις μέσα στις εκλείψεις των αξιών μου, πας και επιστρέψει το μισό της ρίζας μου στη γη σου. Είμαι άλλη. Δεν είμαι πια εγώ. Μα έχω μάθει να γεννάω καρπούς μέσα από το φως σου. Μη μ' αφήνεις. Τώρα σε χρειάζομαι να μου θυμίσει πω γη και θάλασσα. Είναι τα μισά του εαυτού μου που είναι ο Αρδοτυχάνο. Κάπου εκεί, ψηλά στον Όλυμπο, κάπου εκεί, χαμηλά στο Αιγαίο. Greek astronomers, who along with Egyptians and Babylonians are considered key catalysts to the development of world astronomy, have sought thousands of years ago rational explanations for celestial phenomena. Most of the constellation of the Northern Hemisphere derive from Hellenic astronomy, as are the names of many stars, asteroids, and planets. In their attempt to decipher and analyze the motion of the planets, Apollonius of Perga, the third century before Christ, followed by Iparchus of Rhodes, invented the notion of the epicycle. According to Apollonius, an epicycle is the small circular course of a planet, which in turn moves along a larger circle. Both circles rotate clockwise and are roughly parallel to the sun's elliptic orbit. Epicyclical motion has been used in the Antikythera mechanism, an ancient Greek astronomical device for, co for compensating for the elliptical orbit <coughs> of the moon. Paying tribute to our glorious ancestors, the epicycle's bracelet was designed a three-dimensional bubbly piece of jewelry full of smaller and bigger circles forming a sassy galaxy on a lady's arm. Apiron is a Greek word deriving from a, which means without, plus the word pira or peras, which stands for limit, boundary, end. Therefore, apiron is the infinite, the endless, and the boundless. Apiron is a notion was first created by a pre-Socratic philosopher Anaximander, the 6th century BC, who believed it to be the beginning or ultimate reality of everything, Archi. Based and influenced by his teacher Thales, Anaximander believed that Apiron contains and generates the opposites, like cold and hot, wet and dry, which acted on the creation of the world. Apiron is infinite subject to neither old age nor decay, generator of everything and receiver of all when destroyed. Inspired by this notion, I have created a ring whose design is based on the shape of its mathematical symbol and consists of an infinite linear shape perpetually twisting in three dimensions. The technical issue of its turning on the finger while worn has been solved by altering its width where it is in contact with the finger. The concept of Apiron is graphically represented by the most beautiful symbol, which stands for eternity, and is inspired me to create this ring <coughs> that combines fashion, mathematics, mechanics, and eternal love. And now we come to the words. Estandico alfabeto. Ξεκίνης αναδρομολογό. Ότι με αρχικά αναγνωρίζετε the feeling alphabet. Ξεκίνησα να δρομολογώ ότι με αρχικά αναγνωρίζετε στο αισθαντικό αλφάβετο. Κατά την ανάγνωσή του εστερνίστηκα κάθε αποτελούμενη του λέξη. Μην τυχόν και πάρει θάρρος η ιδιότητα και με κυριεύσει. Μα με ποια αναπόλες η ιδιότητα αναγνωρίζεται η κυριαρχία. Μα αυτή που γραμμένα αναγνωρίζει η πρώτη αίσθηση του πλέμματος η όραση. Είμαι αυτή 
που αντιλαμβάνεται τη λογική ή όσχρε ή πριν κάνει τη δει. Και στην πρώτη και στη δεύτερη περίπτωση κουφεί η διέστηση. Να είναι τάχα το αγαπώ η σύρακα των πέντε αισθήσεων, μια και ολοκληρωμένα χωρά στο πεντάγραμμο αλφάβητό τη. Ήταν όνει η αρχή τη και το τέλο να μην ορίζονται. Εξάλλου, ποτέ κανεί μα δεν αναρωτήθηκε για έναν τέτοιο ορισμό. Διδαχθήκαμε να ορίζουμε τη λέξη του τη μόνο λεκτικά. Την αρχή τη με άλφα κεφαλαίο και το τέλο τη μειωμένα. Hellenic language is a unique, wonderful language. It may not be the most ancient language in the world. The Chinese ancient language, for instance, is much older than the Hellenic language. So what is it that makes our language so special? It so happens that a Hellenic language is unique because it is the oldest ancient language that has continuously been used since the ancient times and whose words can etymologically be tracked back in time, having common roots with modern Hellenic words. Furthermore, the conception of its alphabet is considered by experts as one of the greatest discoveries of all times, as vowels had never been used as separate letters in the past, but were either part of syllable letters containing pairs of consonants and vowels, or were indicated as small marks in a row of consonants like in the Arabic language. And why is our language so wonderful? It is wonderful because of its practical orthological and ergonomical structure by means of existence of compound words with endless possibilities of different combinations. Supposing that an ancient Greek of the 4th century BC heard the word telephone, he would instantly know what we were talking about. With that use of compound words, he would know that we were talking about a device that allows one to hear sounds from a distance. Therefore, the Hellenic language can predict words that do not currently exist, but will be used in future life, providing detailed descriptions of anything one may fantasize about. Having fertilized the Latin, ancient language, Hellenic language soon became the object of meticulous study. Even botanologists of past centuries would learn ancient Greek in order to be able to name the overwhelming variety and number of new exotic plants that were brought by them from the new world. Words like pachyphiton or spathopsis macristimon were created, making the life of scientists much easier. Pondering over the fact that the Hellenic language was able to predict future words, just like the Antikythera mechanism uh, that has recently be fo been found was able to predict future positions of planets, the idea of future shapes came to birth. New shapes that would be inspired by Hellenic compound words was a rather far-fetched idea, more difficult to conceive than actually to have it transformed into objects. Thus, designs such as Argyrakanthos Adamantophoros, Argyrakanthos Adamantophoros, Thalassocarpus, the fruit of the sea, Thalassocarpus, gave me the idea of making this design. And Hyonanthus were created, but also existing compound words were the source of inspiration for new shapes and designs, such as megalith, and polychrome. Κάτι σε δίπλα μου. Για μια σιγή λεπτό μοναξιά και πες μου. Τη δυστυχία την νίκησες. Τη σιωπήθησε όμως την κέρδισες. Ικανή την έχω να αρχίσει να οδύρεται τώρα που πήρε μικρές ανάσες η καταθλιπτική άνοιξη. Να γυρνάει σαν τρελή τις νύχτες, να κορνιζώσει οι ενοχές πάνω στο ανάστημά τη. Να νικήσεις προσπαθείς κλέγια ή να κερδίσει. Με τόσα πανωτά χτυπήματα, ακόμα να μάθει σε ποια από τις δύο προσπάθειες συμμετέχει η ευτυχία. Σιδερένιο χέρι έχει να σου, παρί... να σου χαρίσει μόνο όταν παλεύει ύπαρξη για νίκη. Κάθισε δίπλα μου για μια σιγή λεπτό μοναξιά και πες μου. Δεν κερδίζει στο τέλος η ευτυχία από τη σιωπή της. Ποιος λοιπόν 
μπέρδεψε τι έννοιε τη, χαρακτηρίζοντα την τάχα. Κράτα. Known by everybody worldwide is the word medicine. Few people know, though, that this word is Greek. Truly so. The word, medi the word medicine derives from the ancient Greek verb mevome, which means to provide for and to take care of somebody. The famous symbol of medical science can be found in many different versions, containing the snake, which, has cons uh, which was considered by the ancient Hellenists as sacred and used in rituals on honor, honoring Asclepios, the demigod who, according to mythology, was able not only to restore the health of the sick, but also to bring the dead back to life. Asclepios had been punished by Zeus for disrupting the natural order of the world by reviving and resurrecting the dead. Thus came the inspiration for the Ophidian ring. as well as the hair pathology bracelet. Another source of inspiration is garlic, the bulb that accounted for good health as it can lower hypertension. Hippocrates recommended garlic for infections, wounds, cancer, leprosy, epilepsy, heart problems, and digestive disorders. Homer reported that Ulysses owed his escape from Cyrus to yellow garlic. Ancient Greek athletes and soldiers were fed with garlic before competition or before going to battle, so as to give them courage. Garlic was also considered to be able to cause this, the evil spirits lose their way and protect people from demons. And that is why garlic cloths were hung by our ancient ancestors in birthing rooms or in piles of stones at crossroads. Inspired by garlic, the bulb ring was created depicting a stylized version of its geometrical shape. And now, we come to archaeology and mythology. Επίκληση στο συνέστημα. Μίλα μου για τις αλήθειες στο μύθο. Ποιος ήρωας του πόνου τον εφήβρε. Ποια εποχή αραγμένη στη σκύλα και στη χάριτη. Βοκέισον του εφήβρε. Ποιο καράβι με κοπηλά τι ενοχέ επιχείρησε να τον διαψεύσει. Επίκληση στο συνέστημα κάνω. Πώ καταρρύπτει κανεί έναν άλλον μύθο την ανάγκη για επιβεβαίωση. Θα μου πει, εσύ άγρε Ποσειδώνα, αυταπάτη, περνώντα από τον πολύφημο έρωτα και από τι λεστριγόνε ανασφάλειε. Επίκληση στο συνέστημα κάνω. Ομοιρικά θα έρθει τη ζωή μα, δεν λέω. Πε μου όμω αν τελικά η Θάκη είναι μέρο του μύθου, ή αν η αλήθεια πραγματεύεται το μύθο τη ανάμεσα σε τροϊκού πολέμου, νιάτων εμπειρία. Μυθολογία, φερτιλισμένη από διάφορε αρχαιολογικέ φάνειε, είναι επίση μια μεγάλη σχέση με την ιστορία που θα δημιουργήσει αυτή τη μέρα. One of the most beautiful items of the Aperdi collections is a bracelet called Oleiferus, which means porter of olives. This bracelet was designed as a homage to goddess Athena, who won the competition between herself and Poseidon, the god of the seas, for the possession of the city of Athens. Poseidon proceeded in thrusting his trident into one side of the cliff of the Acropolis, where water instantly gushed out. The people admired this a lot, but unfortunately, the water was salty, as it represented Poseidon's kingdom of the seas, and thus regarded as quite useless to them. When Athena's turn came to offer a gift, she chose to plant the first olive tree beside Poseidon's well of water. It was a gift that provided the city with food, precious olive oil, and timber, while which were regarded very useful to the city and its residents. The court of the Olympian gods, here represented by 12 oval agate gemstones, on this bracelet full of olives and olive branches, ruled in favor of Athena, for her gift was superior to the previous one, was superior to the previous one, 
and thus granted her the right to name the city after her. Many other archaeological finds have been a major source of inspiration, such as the terracotta zebra figurines from Viotia, that inspired me to design the zoology bracelet. All the Lydian vessels where ladies kept their magic love potions and other aromas that inspired the magic filter ring. So the we have various techniques for this ring. Inside we have the pavé of the yellow diamonds. And now we arrive to history and philosophy. The last one. We wrote this poem about this event. And the concept of this, our events with Harris is pretty key phalanx. Athimé, Macedones Lacedemoni, this endox is ye semisoplites. Το δόρι μας προτάσουμε με ασύμι χρυσό και μάρμαρο στο θόρακα. Σε πυκνή παράταξη, γη και είδωρ προφυλάσσουμε. Από το χθε ερχόμενη στο αύριο αναδυόμενη. Ανέμακτα τις πάτριες έξις διαλαλούμε, μαζί με την φάλαγγα της τέχνης. Για τον ιερό προγόνο μας μαχόμαστε το πνεύμα. Ασπίδα εμείς της γης, ασπίδα. Εσείς της ξενιτιάς, ανθρώπων και μετάλλων οπλισμός <coughs> του ελληνισμού, η διασπορά. According to the Pythagoreans, the planets as they turn produce various musical sounds, which they name, which they named harmony of the spheres. As incredible as it may seem, NASA recently proved this theory to be true. It so happens that planets and stars do produce music. Although space is a virtual vacuum, this does not mean there is no sound in space. These amazing ambient space sounds came from electronic vibrations of the planets, planetary magnetosphere, trapped radio waves bouncing between the planet and the inner surface of its atmosphere, charged par particle interactions of the planet, moons, and the solar wind, and from charged particle emissions from the rings of certain planets. These sounds have been detected by NASA using specially designed, designed instruments. Inspired by the Pythagorean theory and its proof, the ring, which is, which is called harmonious spheres, has been created unique both in aspect as well as in design and gem setting technique. Last but not least, the notion of ostracism. The ancient Greeks had a way of preserving one of the greatest ideas of all time that was born in our native land, democracy. The word ostracism derives from the Hellenic word ostrakon, referring to the pottery shards that were used as voting tokens or once in each year during the Athenian assembly. The public person whose pile contained the most ostraca, whose number had to exceed 6,000 items, would have 10 days to leave the city of Athens for a period of 10 years. By means of this procedure, Athenians could deal with politicians held to be acting against the interests of the country, thus preserving the great notion of democracy. Inspired by this historical fact, a real ostracum fragment was used to create a most original necklace where one has the possibility of writing their own name on it so as to always remember that Greece is the land where all great philosophical and scientific ideas have been born. My encomium to the protagonists of the Hellenic diaspora, Archons, politicians, hyperatlantic metics, autothon Hellenes of the magical megalopolis of New York. I emphasize that with your patriotism, generosity, philanthropy, and donations, you're a luminous paradigm to us all in an aeon characterized by technological antagonism, amphibology, biased cosmotheories, hypocrisy, hyperbolical narcissism, xenophobia, and the egocentrical symptom 
of general apathy. The tragic and catastrophic miasma of our pathogenic ethnic economical crisis has perplexed, tyrannized, traumatized, and stigmatized us all, insisting us in an asphyctic atmosphere. It did make us stoic, though, periodically satirical, austere, and hilariously auto-sarcastic. It did not, however, petrify us, make us cynical, hysterical, nor sterilize our horizon. Ironically enough, its disastrous toxical abulia enigmatically metabolized into an unparalleled idealism, and not in us anchoring us to a new heroic ego ideal of ethos and praxis. As an architect, I fanatically categorized myself as a practical and ontological technocrat, bibliophore and eccentric polymath. My academic polytechnical schooling so far has been a synergy of mechanics, aesthetics, geometry, graphics, mathematics, and ergonomics, yet magically enough, a flaming amorphous mass of new ideas, sporadically and stalactically affiliated in me as a gigantic diastole to my scope. My idealistic idiosyncrasy, endogenous morphology, physical dexterities, and pathos for music, poetry, etymology of the Hellenic syllable, botany, athletics and gymnastics, philology, calligraphy, new technologies, and Hellenic archaeology mysteriously instilled a new philosophy in me, as if being generated by an archaic code, drastically sophisticating my prism, as summarily magnetizing all in an exotic choreography. My Eureka. Being autonomous, I enthusiastically ostracized myself into the oniric sphere of my encephalic aditum as an histology in a state of hypnosis, where I zealously and methodically filtered, scholastically I hierarchized, and systematically mixed all my demons and passions into one homogenous hybrid. New morphologies that were analyzed and synthesized into an idiomorphous kaleidoscopic pandemonium dynamically generated a new syntax in my dialect as an antidote to the cacophony of this period in Hellenic history. Periodically and on a hebdomadal basis, I energetically practiced my ideas instinctively and anonymously for over a decade, like an acrobat cycling over a chaotic abyss in a tantalizing labyrinth of problems, agony, and dilemma. Yet despite all my skepticism, they were all panegyrically baptized in the ethereal halo of my Hellenic endemic pathos for metron, rhythm, lyricism, and harmony. The phantasmagoric metamorphosis of these theoretical ideas into schematic hologram morphems with plasticity and authentic Hellenic aura has been crystallized in the photographic panorama that dynamically stands like a polychromatic plinth, a monolithic meteorite, a magical elixir, a spondy on the antipode of all exodus of the Ahepa, which would systematize the orchestration of a philhellenic center for the repatriation of our phenomenal archaeological thesaurus, our patrimony dispersed in the museums of all cosmopolitan centers, then this would ecstatically unite us all in an apogee of eudaimonia. Epitomizing all synoptically, I evangelize this being not a pompous rhetoric, a demagogic apothegm, a paranoid axiom or an anachronistic stereotype, but an acme of an Hellenic palingenesis is neither a colossal chimera with an air of utopic fantasy, but a triumphant, melodious hymn. This is my ode to the Meraki and the Philotimo of the Hellenic psyche. Thank you so much. This is the time of the auction now, but I have to make an announcement.
mis delgados. Au clavos Brunescu, au president Ioannis Maronitis, and we, the members of all, have decided to proceed in awarding the following people according to their contribution to the Hellenic and the Hellenic idea. This is honor to Luis Cachos, president of EMCA, and I have a deputy for your offer to Hellenism. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Αυτό μου δίνει πιο μεγάλη ευθύνη. Ε, θα ήθελα να ευχαριστήσω πάρα πολύ τον Ελληνισμό που μου δίνει δύναμη και κάνει support τις δουλειές μου και το vision όλο που έχω για το χαλένισμα της Διασποράς. Α, θα ήθελα να καλωσορίσω στην οικογένεια της Global Alive και τον Νίκο Λέτσιο που κάνει support όλο το χαλένισμα. I would like to say thank you to all the Greek American Hellenic uh, diaspora. Thank you again. Em 
MGTV USA. Οι δραστηριότητες της ελληνοαμερικανικής κοινότητας με βίντεο και πλήρες ρεπορτάζ. Επισκεφτείτε την ιστοσελίδα μας mgtvusa.com Καλύπτουμε καθημερινά τα γεγονότα στην Ομογένεια.